Meg, nice stickers. Yep. All right, so we had a storage solution and one of our awesome viewers um, read our minds and said, hey, I bought you some trash cans. So thank you, Jan. Very much appreciated. We're gonna go put it in the solar kiln and we'll show you what else is going on up there. Cool. All right. Meg, why don't I do the camera? <laughs> You want Eddie. me to do that? All right, here, yeah. take it. You know, I think I started buttoning my shirt, and then... Give up? No, you did button the whole thing, and it was wrong. That's what it was. And then I just gave up on life and did one. No. Give us the tour, Meg. What do we got new? Okay our baffle. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you may know our, our past experience. John and I owned a business together. We were both jewelers. We had a jewelry business and we did trade shows. These were from one of our trade show displays and they could not have worked out more perfectly for this use. Um, these help us separate the cold side from the hot side. So the right here, the doors, the air comes in through the top, goes through the fan, goes over to the other side, which is, I mean, there's gotta be a 20 degree difference between this side and that side. Yep. And the air will circulate down and then through the boards and out the vents on the bottom of the door. Yeah, and the way we installed these, so these were, uh, these are custom made by Meg's mom, who's an awesome, what do you call it, a sostress? Or <laughs> she, she's very good with a sewing machine. A sewer named Sue. <laughs> Sue the sewer. Anyway, um, so all we had to do is make a slit and we put some just, pla I had some plastic uh, electrical conduit that they just, I mean, we had the full distance. So we have six curtains here and it just goes and goes and goes. And the nice thing about it, here, come on this side. Here it is on the bright side. Meg, get out of the way so I can see. Okay. All right. And uh, I think all we need here is something on top of the wood stack to rest the the baffle apron or uh, what are they called? Curtain situation. And then the air circulation could get through the top layer of the boards. But. But wow, it's it's bright over here. Things are working. We got Jan's new trash can. Thank you, Jan. Fits perfect. Look, it fits right in between the cedar. So that's good. We got another one here. Um, and we got plenty of room for our stickers now. Want to see something crazy? Yeah. Look at the gaps in that wall. The gaps in the wall? Yeah. Just from how dry it's gotten. So I think two fans are more than enough in this set up and we can definitely add two more if we need to yeah, let's move this back this way oh, that's right but yeah nice install huh looks uh looks like we made these for this particular purpose but they're actually repurposed from something else we so. were about to buy shipping blankets and i said what about those trade show display curtains and yeah we had the perfect amount, the perfect size. If we were to have designed and made something for this, it wouldn't have been this good. Worked I also want to point out, um, Meg, do you want to talk about why we didn't insulate? That's come up in the comments a couple times. And no, we're not going to insulate. And I don't think we need to. Um, you want me to talk how about, about you? Because I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay. Why aren't we insulating? Well, we are in Virginia. It's a mild climate. We have a winter and a f we have all four seasons, but it doesn't get very cold here. Like cold to us is like 20 Fahrenheit. Um, but most of the year, like today, it's only it's only 40 degrees outside, but in here, it's I'm ready to like wear a t-shirt in here. It's like 70, 75 degrees in here right now. So in our warmer days, which is most of the year, um, it's going to facilitate upwards of 100 plus degrees easily in here. Um, insulation, I really didn't see a need for it. Number one, this is a room where air just circulates through. It is designed to pull air in from the outside 
whip it around the hot side and go through and exit and then the cycle continues over and over again. Why insulate a space like that? I don't know because you're constantly replacing that air that's inside. So to me and our climate, it just didn't make any sense. What am I, what am I trying to conserve here? I'm constantly replacing that airflow anyway. So we're not insulating it, we're keeping it just like this. We're not doing any foam insulation, anything like that. This is, um, you know, greenhouses do it the same way. And um, another question we got, yes, we are going to use this as a greenhouse or a um, hydroponic house, something like that, even maybe a little chicken coop. It'll be a multi-purpose building, but right now we're gonna use it primarily to dry our lumber that we're making for the house. Um, our little chain situation has been very nice. It's been extremely windy the past week. We haven't had any issues. The doors have stayed put. So here's what the finished product of all the vents look like. So I got four on the top and four on the bottom on each door. We're gonna keep them stainless for now. It came out good. Came out good, yeah. We have to finish touching up my, this is finally dry and hard. The temperature didn't really help with the curing of that wood glue, but that dried. Um, we just have a few little touch-ups to do and we will wrap up this project. So we got a lot of pine to cut. That's first up, but I wanted to get something. Well, let's go for a ride. I'll show you what's up. All right, guys, today we're headed down the road, not far from our place. This is the way I leave when I go into town. And it's a pretty isolated road. But anyway, I know the property owner of a few lots down. And every time I pass by, I see this tree and it just breaks my heart that it's laying down there rotting. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a minute. All right, guys, here's what I'm, I've made the journey for. It's right down the road. I see it every, every, every time I drive by, there's the road right there. I drive by and I see that and it breaks my heart. I cannot let this sit here anymore. I called this property owner who also owns that and that goes all the way up to my place. The power lines go through right in the front, you know, it's like, but anyway, there's a power line across the street, nowhere in sight here. Someone came from the power company and cut down this black walnut. Look at that thing. Whew. So, I'm on a rescue mission today. Like I said, I drive by, I look at this thing, and I just want to cry. I can't leave this thing to rot. I called the property owner. He said, yeah, go ahead and rescue it and take all you want. Um, so, yeah, but the, I mean, I am well well further than 25 feet from that power line. Um, I guess maybe the canopy on this tree was going over the road approaching that, but no way this thing would ever get close to even touching those lines across the street over there. But they just came, they chopped it down and took off. And now I'm walking on it. It's actually off the ground. Wow, this is, this is something. Holy cow. It goes all the way up to here. These little yellow things, if you're in southwest Virginia like we are, these yellow things are um, spice bush. It's actually coming from that tree there. But that's usually the first sign of spring. You see these yellow flowers and then they start leafing. And, um, and if, you, if you rip off a piece and smell, it smells very uh, peppery. And it's a nice sign of spring. But, but wow, guys, look at this thing. I'm going to try to take as much as I can here. Um, 
it yeah we're gonna do a lot of like nice details in the house and this would be a fantastic wood to use all right there's a little bit of a crookedness here i'm gonna try to figure out where to cut this thing oh a few of you asked me um, I've had this for a while now. I just uh, recently reacquired it, so I do have a steel MS-170. It's a great little saw. It's like a little razor, man, I'll tell you. Alright, I know you guys don't like seeing that Craftsman chainsaw on the channel. Alright, now I'm thinking about my, my sawmill and what it can do here. Even if I cut some small sections here, if I cut some five footers, like from the end of my tape to here is where this weird bend begins. And then there's another nice straight section down there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right about here and cut this thing. And then the, it flares out at the bottom there. So I just wanna make sure I'm cutting at the right spot. You don't come across trees like this all the time. And if you do, I like to leave them in the ground. Adds a lot of value to your property. Anyway, I can't leave this thing here to rot. Can't do it, no way. The other problem with this saw, it's not running correctly. I got, and this is one of those, um, one of those EPA saws. You know, you can't adjust the carburetor. So I really gotta clean it out. Um, it's running weird, weird low. I have to constantly give it a little fuel. It's not the idle speed. It's something I just have to give it a little fuel for its low. But once I open it up and, and it's running high, the saw is perfect. It's just in the low side of the carb is kind of screwy. But anyway, let's go. Look at you. Wow. That is really a treat. All right, that's a short run, but the next section's pretty long. It's not even that heavy, really. See, it's about to start rotting, man. Look at this tree, guys. How wild is that? Not used to seeing lumber like that, or timber, I mean. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful log on the sawmill. All right, let's go cut the next one. Now with this branch set, the log diameter changes, so it's good to cut it here. And then try to get one more run out of it after that. Get these branches off the ground first, or off the off the log. That's gonna be about what Ricky can carry. Still got a little bit left here. Yeah, let's let's just try to cut off these branches and then we'll cut another log. Let's do it. I'm here. Why not? like pieces like this it's still really nice firewood or if you could shape it somehow do some hobbyist work one that's amazing all right all right I got a crotch up here I'm gonna cut that off you know I might 
might come back and get the rest of these branches for some nice firewood. I'm not promising, but I might. Okay, cool. This will work. Fun part's over, now the work begins. All right, the plan, guys, is just to get Ricky. I got three chains. That's two. I got three. I got three chains in the uh, in the book of the backhoe. And I was just gonna wrap around that and swing with the backhoe and kind of just ring it in. I also have that uh, winch on there too. Oh. Get all that mix. Okay, what do I want to pull with?
All right, for now, I'm gonna leave this and we'll see if we come back for it. It's a lot of good wood here if you want it to burn it. There's other stuff too, not big enough to fit on the sawmill. Unless you really were hurting for some walnut. But, thank you tree. We got all three out, we got the first two, we went that way, and then we took the third one out that way. And uh, I didn't make too big of a mess here. It won't take nature long to recover here. This is, um, that's, that's fine. That's Virginia Creeper. Okay, you're walking on it. Anyway. <laughs> it's not poison ivy, Autumn. Don't worry. I know. Okay. I'm not worried. You're not worried? I'm not worried. Wow, that's a 14-footer there. Cool. Oh. Look at the, look at this. That's pretty. All right, Autumn, it's not stable, honey. Roll, honey. You're gonna get hurt. Dogs have to walk on it. Oh yeah. This is gonna be hobbyist stuff. I'm not trying to build any like structural whatever. Um, who knows though? Uh, I just wanted to get it out of the woods and then have a discussion with Meg here. Now you look like an angel with the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, we just wanted to have a discussion. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with this. Make some faux beams or something like that for like a coffered ceiling. They could do a lot of things. Um, I just didn't want this to go to waste. Now, if you guys remember way back, I did an episode about cutting oversized logs on a sawmill when I had the Harbor Freight sawmill in its normal state. The biggest log it could hold was like nine and a half feet. And we did a whole segment and what that log was we got it from our woods it was a down tree it was the same type of tree it was a black walnut like this and we milled it and then we wound up putting it in the barn the barn up there for a couple of years now it's been sitting up there and i think we're going to purpose that to be something for the house we're probably going to make our dinette our um, dining room table out of that so anyway this will add to it and um this is what it's all about Having an adventure and, uh, you know, telling a story with the stuff you build for the house. It's pretty nice, huh, Meg? Yep. It jacket was yellow. You're thinking of Inspector Gadget. He didn't have a yellow jacket. Inspector Gadget? No? Dick Tracy's hat is yellow? Maybe they're the same person. I don't know, John. Oh yeah, I got most of it in the gas tank. <laughs> Come do, on! Do you need help? Need something. Just commit. I'm gonna say right off the top, guys. I've been milling for a while now. I've never noticed the difference as to whether or not you leave this minuscule amount of dirt on your tree. And if you wanna take the time to take the bark off, if you think that's gonna help the life of your blade, I'm not. <laughs> right. 
it's just not worth my time. I'll just sharpen it. Maybe I'll get like one less cut out of it. It just, I never notice a difference. Now that's the heartwood, which is your just picturesque black walnut right there. I was going to cut this off. And then this is the uh, this is where all the moisture and everything sucked up by the tree. This it's weird how there's like three, well, four layers, because you have the bark, mm -hmm. and then this orangey stuff, and then the white stuff, and then the yeah. heartwood. Just the and then the pith, or is that just? Yes, yeah, that's the. Yeah. Really pithes me off. And then pithes you off. Yeah. I like the I like the pattern that the bark makes. Alright, being that we got this uh, big bell at the bottom here, I'm going to rotate the log and then it's going to be sitting kind of like this on the small end. So then I'm going to jack up that small end and just then I'll rotate it twice and do the same thing on the uh, opposing side. And then that way we're kind of shaving like parallel lines this way, but we're not wasting much on the desirable part of the log. Okay. I'm really hopeful. <laughs> few whoopsies on the sawmill past few years. <laughs> oh goodness. So sometimes you guys get this ivy on your tree and a good way to tell if it's poison ivy or not. There's a lot of Virginia creeper around here. They have these little like alien looking arms. Well fingers. They I, I think they look like fingers like that. And they really stick on when you go and pull this stuff off. Now if this was poison ivy it would certainly be like all the oils in the roots would get you, but if they have these little pod finger looking things like that, then it's Virginia creeper. Yeah. And if this stuff's growing on your house and you go to peel it off, this stuff just totally makes a mess. But anyway, just a way of identifying what's on the tree. All right. I feel like Bill Nye today. Made a mistake there, guys, because you distracted me with your Virginia creeper nonsense. Thanks a lot. Anyway, we're going to slab it now. What that means, we're going to just make cuts, and then whatever ends up on the outside, we're going to leave it there. Um, live edge, if you will. I don't like that term. Live edge. It's bark. We're going to leave some bark on the side here, and um, then we're going to store it like that because we don't know what the purpose of this wood is going to be. And what dimension we're gonna want it. So. Yeah, so we're gonna, I guess, cut it two inch pieces.
drive it. Eight, eight foot board. How much do you think of it? I don't know. One board. One board. Two inch thick. Yeah, by what? By eight feet. Well, it says live edge, so it says from uh, eight inch to 12 inch. Oh, well, I don't know, 200? 300. dollars $300 a board. <laughs> All right. Or you could just drive on the side of the road. <laughs> See, sawmill pays for itself, Mick. Yeah. It's paid for itself many times by now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right, that's done. That's a good yield. They're bending a little bit. Pretty, but... John. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. They're all cut even. It's just they're kind of de-stressing. Yeah. I love how they turn purple like this. Yeah. Once they dry out. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get them in the kiln, huh? Sure. place to put this stuff, huh? happening folks you've probably seen this birdhouse in the background in a lot of videos we're finally going to do something with it yeah i went out to our local store aka the woods and got a post oh well there's a few wasps in there i mean if i was a bird did someone put this in here i mean i doubt a bird did <laughs> all, right. all right so does this come out okay it all comes out wow this oh it looks like a bird started maybe um yeah this could be a literal airbnb get it air birds the hole all right where are we putting it like right here well i don't know here this, this what? is a good spot that's a good spot you sure? I think the birds will like it here next to the tree. Yeah. All right. All right, here. Right there. Okay, why don't you go get your uh, womanly chainsaw? Oh man, you're gonna do that? You make me get all the tools. All right. What are you doing, Meg? It's not linguine. <laughs> <laughs> really big all right that's enough fun all right go get the chainsaw I'll go get the chainsaw the little blue one kids it's 
Why is Maddie's not watching? Hey, Maddie, I'm digging a hole. Carmen, I'm digging a hole. Look. <laughs> I'm coming. Come here, Maddie. I found a grub already. Look. Look at that grub. What is that? You don't want them? I think they have little teeth, honey. Look at the grub, guys. Gross, huh? Maybe our friends on the camera wants them. All right, look out, Maddie. Look out, watch your paws. What's the pick tool? Oh. How deep you gonna go, John? Oh, I don't know, until it gets annoying. I'm gonna stop. Well, we don't want it to fall over. That would be very unfortunate for the birds. Can you imagine? Do a little test fit. And then we'll cut off whatever you want. Now the idea here is to uh, provide a few little perches for our little feathered friends. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Good? All yeah. right. Cool. Yeah. Except this is the side that, oh, looks like you hit it with the weed whacker or something. No. <laughs> no, not you. Honey, that's the room with the view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Seriously, Meg, where's it going? You want one more in there? Yeah. All right. They can see. We didn't want to involve the ladder with this, so. I asked Meg if we should put a little nesting material in here, get them started. She's like, no, pretty much like make them work for it. Man, heartless. All right, this goes next. Okay. Hey, Clara, up on my shoulders. Here, you're gonna take this little ball, just tighten it up. You'll see the rod up there in the middle. Just tighten it down this way uh -huh. um, until it just bites a little bit. You don't have to crank it down. You won't be able to anyway. All right, on my shoulders. All the way up. Okay. Not a piggyback ride, a chicken fight. Chicken. Like in the pool. All right, can you reach it? Yeah. <laughs> just get the first couple little threads on it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Good job. Down we go. <laughs> gotcha. Ah. Alright. There we go. Oh, thank you, honey. You're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> Look, there's a birder. I don't think he's going to fit. That's a big bird. I don't think a vulture is going to get in here. Uh. <laughs> Alright, guys. That improved our property value. Look at that. Look at it. Well, I think it's just downright cute. We'll keep you posted who takes residency. We'll put a webcam right here. It could stream 24 seven. That'd be cool. I'm not gonna do that, but that'd be cool. Oh, okay. Meg, thanks for the help. <laughs> Punk. Meg got a phone call.
All right, guys, after a little time, all I really need in the kiln here is something to put on top of the stack so that I don't make contact with the uh, material here and the wood. I'd like to have a few um, just like tin panels or something like that that have a sticker mounted on the bottom of them. And then I could rest that on top of the stack and then put the uh, sheets just like this. As long as they're not blocking the airflow back there, I would just drape them over like that. And the front would look like that. So made good progress there with that big log. I counted, but I forgot. I think I got like 38 boards out of those two logs, but that's not the end because I had to make the, on the big log, I had to make these two cuts, which seemed wasteful, but that's as high as the sawmill would go. So this one, I'll probably get two more boards out of, and um, I don't know, or I might mill it. Um, I'm starting a collection of just random wood over there for the kid's tree house. So any odd shaped things I'm stacking over there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That was a sawmill heavy episode, but um, that was a lot of work too. Anyway, Meg and I had a discussion today. What is next? April 1st is our date of frost really isn't a problem anymore. It, we're not going to have a hard freeze if we get into the 30, whatever. It's kind of the date where you could start pouring concrete. So we're going to get back up to the house site and start prepping that and really marking everything and doing a lot of work up there so it'll be a nice change of scenery for you guys season's finally here and we're ready to go we're going to mill we're going to build the house we're going to be pouring footers we're going to be doing crazy stuff not to mention i don't even know if i shared this or not we're going to build another structure up at the house for everything uh, for all the solar equipment our water is going to be running in there and everything else so it's going to be a small structure similar to the shed but it's going to all be insulated um, and all this and that but anyway Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven times six. Sixty-six boards we have so far. So we're two-thirds of the way there. Stack about yay high and we'll be there. This is what gets Maddie fired up. Hold on, wait. Go get it, Maddie! <laughs> that a girl, come on. Good girl. Good girl. You gonna <laughs> you gonna photobomb us, Carmen? Oh, I always smell the trees that I take. Tracy's hat yellow? Uh, hell yeah, it's yellow. I thought his like jacket was yellow. You're thinking of Inspector Gadget. He didn't have a yellow jacket. Inspector Gadget? No? Dick Tracy's hat is yellow? Maybe they're the same person. I don't know, John. Oh yeah, I got most of it in the gas tank. <laughs> Come do, on! Do you need help? Need something. Just commit. Okay, guys, thank you for watching our episode. Oh, that's a grapple in the back. All right.